love to build and hammer. Well, today my boys and I are teaming up with the Home Depot Kids Workshop to show you how to make this fun soccer game right at home with your kids. I'm Serena. I'm Kojo. I'm Ahoy. And I'm Kwabana. And today we are gonna have a lot of fun with this project. Now you can pick up one of these kits from Home Depot or you can go to homedepot.com. But don't worry, if you can't get your hands on this, we will show you some alternative materials that you can use to make this exact well, maybe not exact, but it's gonna be equally cool. We're just using materials around the house. Oh, and stick around because we are gonna be making a catapult out of popsicle sticks and a plastic spoon. So you've gotta stick around for that. So are you guys ready? Yes. <laughs> All right, let's do this. <laughs> he was doing his best to hold in that laughter, wasn't he? Now this soccer game kit comes with all the wooden pieces that you need to construct it. You get one base, two short sides, two longer sides, one backboard, one dowel, one foam goalie, and of course, one soccer ball. Now it does include all the necessary hardware and stickers that you'll need. You'll get four short nails, four long nails, and two screws, and of course, lots of stickers. But you'll also need a few more tools and items, including a hammer, a number two Phillips screwdriver, some wood glue, and some very fine sandpaper. And let's remember the safety glasses and the dust mask too. And what's great is that each kit comes with a certificate of completion, an apron pin, and I love this, a kid's workshop apron where they can write their name on it. Pretty cool, huh? And because I plan on doing a lot more building with my kids in the future, I bought each one of them their own personal hammer so they could label it and start building their DIY tool collection. So once everything was labeled, smocks had their name, we were ready to go. And of course we needed eye protection. So once we made sure that everyone was safe, it was time to start with step one of this soccer game. Of course, it's a good idea for kids to sit down and read through the instructions so that they know what the project is going to involve. And everything is color coded, so it's very easy to see which nails, which screws need to be used for which step. Use the very fine sandpaper to smooth all of those rough edges from the wood, wearing a dust mask, and then using a towel to clean up the excess dust before moving on to the next part, which is the assembly. And we're gonna be using wood glue here and nails. So for step one, have your child take some of this wood glue and apply it to the long piece. And this is where an adult may come in handy because you wanna keep this nice and even. And that glue, as you know, can move around. So holding that and wiping the excess, then have your child take one of the small nails and hammer it into place. There will be two nails used for this section. With the younger kids, you may need to help them with the gluing, but that's fine as long as you wipe up the excess because if you're planning to stain your project, if you don't wipe the excess glue, the stain won't properly adhere to the wood. So let them do it, help them when needed, and tell them they're doing a great job. The other long side will get a coat of glue as well, and you'll attach it with two short nails. And you also, again, wanna make sure that the sides are lined up and that you're using two of the short nails. For step two, apply a thin coat of glue to the bottom of the short side, making sure that that hole for the dowel is next to the long side. We let that dry for a couple minutes and then turned it over, making sure the edges were lined up and even and use two long nails to attach it. For the other short side, you'll repeat that same exact process, again, lining up the edges, making sure that you're wiping the excess glue and using two long nails to adhere it to the base. And step three is every kid's favorite part because it involves stickers, of course. We found that it was most helpful to align the sticker to the goalie arch, and that made a pretty good fit. Now, if you are painting your project, paint only the base assembly. Don't paint the backboard, the dowel, or the goalie, and allow that paint to dry completely. And of course, apply the sticker to the foam goalie. Step four, match the screw holes in the backboard to the screw holes in the short side pieces. This is where your kids will need a number two Phillips screwdriver, and it's very simple to screw it in. Everything's already pre-drilled, and once that's done, it's time to insert the foam goalie. Now, you're going to take the dowel for step five and run it through the goalie and then out through the other side, making sure it's in the center, and you're pretty much done at that point. But the fun doesn't end there because not only can your child paint or decorate this as they choose, but they can actually take two of these and put them together like my kids thought of and play each other. That's right. When they were done constructing this, they said, hey, mommy, what if we join these together with some of the stickers in the kit and then we can play against each other? And I thought, you guys are amazingly creative. It's amazing what kids will think of when they have the opportunity. 
So what if you don't have the opportunity to get one of these kits? Well, I can tell you there are some things around your house that you have that you can make this. All you need is some cardboard, bounty balls, straws, tape, or hot glue. And yes, we have plenty of these lying around, don't we? So we can take pieces and use these measurements from the soccer game, or we can create a larger or smaller one. Now, while Oheni and Kojo were having fun playing, Kwabana was helping me actually create an alternative to the soccer game, just using cardboard. We cut our pieces in similar size as the soccer game. I used a screwdriver and a pencil to create the holes that the straw will go in for the dowel. And we had to keep this all together. So for us, hot glue worked, but you can also use tape. Now you can get very creative here. You can paint this, you can use scrapbook paper to cover it, but we wanted to make sure whatever we did that it wasn't gonna fall apart. So we used a lot of glue on the top, the edges, and even the bottom too. We inserted the straw into the holes and then we needed to hot glue the goalie onto the straw. I thought that the hot glue would burn through the straw, but thankfully it didn't and it seemed like it was on there pretty strong. Now, if you want your straw to be a little longer, you can actually insert another straw into the end and then snip it where you want it to be to that length. But there's one more cool thing we have to do. We have to build a catapult. So whether you used a soccer game kit or you got creative and found some materials from around your house, we are gonna build a catapult for this soccer game using popsicle sticks, rubber bands, and a plastic spoon. This workshop extension activity can be found on sciencefaircentral.com and all we're going to be using are things that we found around the home. And believe me, the kids ate a lot of popsicles in order for us to collect this. So using some hot glue, I made three sets of three. Now, if you've got more popsicle sticks, this is actually good because you want to stack it as high as possible. So if you can do six sets of three, great. If you're like us and you can only do three sets of three, no problem, it'll still work. But we're gonna hot glue these together and make three sets of three. And then we're gonna put a rubber band on the left side and the rubber band on the other side. And we're gonna set that aside. Do two more sets of three and then sandwich them together with a rubber band, having the bottom just a little bit more forward, creating this mouth. And then the ones that we set aside, put those in between, sandwich them, and then our spoon is gonna go on top. This is how we're gonna form the catapult and we'll use another rubber band to secure the plastic spoon to the popsicle sticks. Now here's where you have to get a little creative because once you try your catapult, if the ball is not going towards the goal, then you have to make some adjustments. This is where the science and the learning come in because kids will have to adjust the spoon, they'll have to adjust the popsicle sticks, and it's a great activity for kids to really understand science and think about how one little minor adjustment will affect where that ball lands. My sons realized that by putting more popsicle sticks underneath of the catapult, they were able to get the ball to go a little bit more in the direction that they wanted it to, straight forward and a little bit higher and a little further. That. Oh, Mom, did you put that in? Yes. Did you put that in? Oh, that was clean. Well, you can tell that Oheni was super excited about that amazing block and he wanted to make sure that footage landed in this video. So hats off to you, Oheni, for a great job well done. They earned their certificates and they also earned their workshop pins. What I love about these pre-cut kits is that they encourage creativity and it instilled a sense of accomplishment. My boys are a little older at eight, 10, and 14, but these kits are actually easy enough for a five-year-old, but really we all had fun with them and they were a great way to spend time with the kids. So if you'd like to teach your kids how to hammer, how to create something really cool in less than one hour, you can find a limited supply of these soccer game kits at Home Depot or at homedepot.com but you can also create it just out of cardboard and things you have from home. Just simple materials that don't cost any money. Home Depot has teamed up with Discovery Education and you can find this project and all kinds of projects to do with your kids at sciencefaircentral.com. I'm Serena. I'm Kojo. I'm Renee. And I'm Kwabana. And we will see you next project.